Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. Today we're going to be talking about Xbox and what in the world their strategy is. Just a few days ago, they had the Xbox Game Showcase and, you know, there were all these titles that were, you know, shown. Some were interesting to some people, some not so interesting to some other people. In my case, I can probably only pinpoint about two games that I'm interested in, you know, what they showed. But I don't know if the gaming community is actually judging Xbox based on their business model and their approach to gaming as a whole. Now, this is not to say that Xbox's, um, you know, show was not underwhelming. It was, but I think, you know, if we are pinning it against, you know, PlayStation or Sony's approach, then it may make no sense in, in that regard. Like, oh, your console, how many exclusives do you have? How many really cool and solid exclus exclusives are we gonna get? If we buy your console, Sony basically created that standard, made all these exclusives, have been making these exclusives for so many years and eating dust until PS4 generation came around and they basically reaped a lot of the rewards. Microsoft, on the other hand, they are still going to be making money because the ecosystem is not basically closed. I mean, there are other development teams and publishing companies that are going to be making money uh, or they're going to make Microsoft money when they pay Microsoft their licensing fees. If you have your game on their console, they get a cut from every sale that you make. So if your game is successful and has a wide audience and that comes to the Xbox platform, well, guess what? You're going to get some money out of it. Now, also, if you look at the mobile aspect of things, which is the cloud gaming that Microsoft has actually set up, they've been doing a, a kind of a pilot for an Xbox cloud service that you can play on your mobile phone using your Xbox controller. To me, that doesn't really seem right now to a lot of people as something that's important. I think it's really important. I think it's quite groundbreaking. And Sony right now doesn't have a response for something like that because what's going to happen is with the way we're, able, we're, we're moving all over the place, many people are going to be able to carry their games with them on the go. This is a very solid you know, package for the fact that you can't always kind of chill around and, you know, just play your video games in different circumstances or different situations. But in these situations, you can actually now take your cell phone, you can connect your Xbox controller to your cell phone and actually game from wherever you are. This is, my, in my opinion, going to appeal to a whole bunch of gamers. And I think Microsoft is trying to leverage this with partnerships because all it is is, hey, do you want your game to be on here? And these publishers are like, sure, let my game be on there. And Microsoft's like, we'll give you this cut for people who subscribe. And what I mean, who's to say that many companies are not going to do it? Because right now that um, system is actually in a pilot system right now. It's actually in beta testing. I was able to join and there are some really cool games. Capcom already has some games on there. Bandai Namco has, you know, basically uh, Tekken 7 on there. Capcom had Devil May Cry. I think the more recent Devil May Cry game on there. And there was a host of all kinds of other games on there. I haven't logged in in a long time. Because, you know, it was kind of a beta testing thing, but it really did work very well. It worked smoothly. I was able to play. In fact, I was able to do combos on Tekken 7. That's crazy because it's a wireless controller. But at the same time, it did have enough response that if somebody really wanted to take their favorite game on the road with them, they somewhat have to have that Xbox ecosystem in their back pocket. It's one of those things where even if you go buy a PlayStation 4 and as a gamer, you have a, a wider range of spending, you might find yourself in Microsoft ecosystem then also we have you know xbox game pass that's a very huge uh, service that microsoft is offering and they're pioneering this because i think they believe a lot in it and see the you know they see the, the the promise and they see the potential that's why they actually invested so much and basically made made stadia look like crap and are wanting to go into these partnerships and to this ecosystem that has been basically untapped by big heavy hitters so if you think about the PC gaming ecosystem, Steam has basically gone unchecked until Epic Games showed up. But if you count how many, you know, players are there, Epic Games, yes, they are a big, you know, development firm, but they're really babies compared to, you know, Microsoft. And, you know, I think Microsoft looked and said, well, we have just these two companies and a few others around that are kind of playing, you know, toss back and forth. Why don't we see if we can come in here and actually, you know, create a presence? And they are, they are creating a pet presence and have created a very significant presence. And I think we're not going to realize it until we make our way into the console generation where these games start to get a lot more pricey and people start to look at subscription services as an alternative for them to be able to gain, you know, access to these games. Once that becomes a proposition, people are going to start ditching consoles. I mean, look at the PlayStation. It's coming out with a digital edition. You see that? I mean, I don't know if you guys look very closely. 
closely and the rumored prices show that the digital edition is actually going to be less pricey than the physical edition. So when you kind of round everything up, <laughs> it makes a whole lot of sense to say, well, something is going on in the digital space. And with the world that we've, you know, that we've had to go through the past few months, I think it makes a whole lot of sense to say, okay, digital games still have a very strong footing and a strong place. Physical copies still do have a strong place, but anybody that doesn't have a digital platform or anybody that's not trying to leverage cloud, cloud platform right now is probably sitting behind. And if anything like this becomes popular, or if, it, if it blows up and becomes big, they might regret not finding themselves in that ecosystem already. So I think Microsoft has a robust strategy. So what we saw in their game presentation, even though it was underwhelming, I would not write Microsoft off just yet. I would not write Xbox Game Studios off just yet. I think there are a lot of other things that are to come. And until we see the way this console generation is progressing, maybe after a year or two, we're probably not going to be able to judge right now. Anyways, that's pretty much my opinion. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you guys' this time and audience.